some of these things they're pushing are not shadow work and many of the things they're pushing should not be attempted by certain people. There is a line that you should not cross with pushing your brain too far into traumatized mode. If you do have any issues with EDs or substance abuse or self-harm, even if you don't have any problems with psychosis, you may find you have problems with relapse when it comes to traumatizing yourself to this extent. So hello you wonderful human of the internet and welcome back to another video about TikTok trends going on at the moment. Last time we were talking about dark femininity and I still have more to say on that subject. There will be another video coming on that subject. But today I wanted to talk about TikTok's obsession with shadow work or what they're calling shadow work and what they're pushing as shadow work. And the fact that actually some of these things they're pushing are not shadow work and many of the things they're pushing should not be attempted by certain people because you could genuinely endanger their lives. So when I first came across this whole shadow work thing on TikTok, I honestly wasn't particularly familiar with the term. I didn't know what it was, just like clearly a lot of people because you get so many people asking in the comments like, what, what is shadow work? How do I get started in shadow work? And... TikTokers being TikTokers, like I said in the last video, TikTok, the way to sell your platform and the way the thing it's all about is secrets that, you know, you have to make out that you know everything while spilling this much. If you want to know more, follow for part two, blah, 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 blah. This is the way that TikTokers sell things. When in truth, when, mm, when you're talking about something that is as important and pivotal to a person's mental health. When someone asks you a question about, well, how do I do this thing? What you should tell them to do, you don't even have to research and do this thing. You just tell them, Google is your friend, books, get a book. And this is what I did because seriously, as I said in the last video, I think if you are going to go down any of these routes with dark femininity, with shadow work, with any of these things, if you're following TikTokers and you're finding them very tantalizing. Basically, they're saying a lot of things you're thinking are interesting, but you're not getting any meat with this. You know, you're not really getting any, okay, this is how I get started. That is when you need a book. You are going to find so much more stuff and it's going to be so much more well-researched, well-grounded, well-approved information than you're going to get from TikTok. The book I ended up with is this one, A Guide to Shadow Work by Michelle L. Gelden highs. I hope I'm saying that right. But anyway, it looks like this. I have found this quite a good little book. It does give you exercises to do. And it did make me realize, okay, so this this is this is shadow work. Really? Shadow work, just like dark femininity. It's not really dark at all, is it? Um, again, I think what has happened on TikTok is that the term shadow work being comprised of shadow, which, ooh, ooh, spooky shadow, spooky shadow. Um, because if you put in shadow work in the TikTok search bar, if you just type shadow, the first thing you get will be shadow work. And the second thing you get will be shadow people, which I think are like, you know, these spooky things you see in the corners of your eyes if you have certain psychological illnesses or if you haven't slept enough, you can get you can get these things going on. Or if you believe you're being haunted, shadow people. So so shadow on TikTok, there's a lot of a lot of spookiness around the word shadow. And then because there is the word work in shadow work, people on TikTok do seem to be confusing shadow work, which is just a psychological theory and is no spookier than any other psychological theory out there. But because it's got work in it, we are somehow mixing and mingling it with witchcraft because a lot of people call it, you know, I'm doing work for someone, I'm doing work on this thing and it's, you know, it's witchcraft of some variety or another. Shadow work is, it depends who you talk to. Some people do put a bit of a, um, a bit of a witchy woo woo element into shadow work that this shadow part of yourself, which is essentially all the qualities of yourself that you do not like, that you deny, that you keep in the shadow. Some people will theorize, does this denied part of the self have the capacity to become an actual presence of some sort, like an actual shadow demon creature? There is a little bit of this thinking in certain things. I think actually even this book has a bit of a, a mention of can it become 
something a bit more demonic but they don't they don't go into great detail about this so shadow work and what it actually is there are things like inner child work which is generally done again in quite a fluffy cuddly kind of way so things like keeping a picture of your childhood self next to the bed um, and just sending positive thoughts and positive energy towards this child version of yourself, trying to realise that, you know, as you're going through this process of shadow work and looking at the parts of yourself that you don't particularly love and, that, you know, are a bit more atrocious than the bits that you actually want to accept about yourself, you're still reminding yourself, this is this is who I am and who I was and who I am inside is, is this innocent child version of me. So you can imagine protecting them. You can imagine kind of, you know, giving them hugs in bed, things like this. Just just it's like treating your your inner child like your own child kind of thing, which I think is ooh, a bit emotional, actually. Um, I, I haven't I haven't delved into actually acting on anything in this book yet because it. I get where people are coming from with this like, oh, shadow work, you know, it's, it's going to be dark. It's going to be grueling. Because I think I think it's going to make you cry a lot, probably. Yes, but the bits of shadow work that I think people are really taking out of context and really turning into something potentially very dangerous is that actual shadow work is generally about looking at things that you have done. Or it can involve things like looking into patterns that are repeating in your current life, such as finding very emotionally distant partners or friends who are never there for you and going back into your childhood to find the event or situation in your early life that caused you to form this attachment style that makes you comfortable around people who are maybe not the best thing for you. Rather than tackling head-on things like giant traumas. If you have got any giant, giant traumas in your past and things that really just you don't like to think about or that really mess you up when you think about them or that you've been just trying to run from for years and years and years and now you've got someone on TikTok telling you that the best way to deal with this is to go it completely alone because these these people on TikTok talking about shadow work, they never seem to advise going to a therapist with this, even though they are not taking the lighter, lighter hearted, easier aspects of shadow work, like thinking back to things you've done that you're not proud of, for instance. This is an example of shadow work. So thinking back to moments when you cringed at things you did or things that you look back and you're like, oh, that was a really shitty thing that I did there. These are things that you look at in shadow work. You're looking at the parts of yourself and the things that you've done that are not good, that are not nice, and trying to come to terms with, okay, the fact is I'm a flawed person, but I am going to love fully who I am, all of it, and bringing those shadow elements into the light. So this is, these are the bits that, it's going to be uncomfortable, but it's not, it's not going to make you cry and shake and puke basically which a lot of people on tiktok are, are like oh you, you know you get shadow work you're gonna be crying and shaking and puking at three o'clock in the morning it's gonna be like you're being possessed you know ah, it's gonna be awful um there are some people out there who are for sure going to benefit hugely from tackling traumas in their life head on alone like this and yes they may be able to take being up at three o'clock in the morning, dwelling on their traumas, crying, shaking and puking and get through it and actually come out of it stronger. But this shit should not be advertised as the fix-all, cure-all for every person struggling with issues. Because, I mean, for God's sake, how can we be in 2022 and not realise that when it comes to mental health issues, there is no one-size-fits-all cure for mental health issues like mindfulness and meditation? You may not be aware of this, but mindfulness and meditation have been proven to actually be extremely dangerous to certain people. Guided meditation is a different matter. Guided meditation that keeps your brain active and keeps you going to different things is safer but silent meditation should not be used by some people. Mindfulness should not be used by some people. And I'm sure a lot of people are like, what the f*** are you on about? Who can be hurt by mindfulness? Well, what happened basically was that over the years that these things became very, very big and they became the, the fix-all, just like shadow work seems to be becoming the fix-all now, mindfulness, meditation, oh, everybody's got to be doing these things, they're going to fix you. So a lot of people started going on mindfulness and meditation retreats where they were really immersed in these things. A lot of people who had trauma 
you know, like hardcore trauma stored up in their body and in their mind when they went to these retreats and they were trapped in silence in their mind with no way out and just, you know, you've just got to sit there and be mindful and be stuck in your thoughts. They had psychotic breaks. A lot of them had psychotic breaks. And at that point, we started to realize these things that we thought were the fix all for everyone. Guess what? Oh, my God, humans are different. Not everyone can be fixed in exactly the same way. And even when it goes for not extreme things like mindfulness retreats and silent retreats and all of this, but even just meditation, sitting down and trying to meditate, a lot of people who have big time trauma in their past cannot silent meditate because the minute they try and sit down and calm down and just be still and be quiet, they f just feel the anxiety and the freakouts and the flashbacks just coming back and they can't do it. Um, and that does not mean that there is anything wrong with you. It just means that you are a human being. You, you're you going to vary and you've been through a lot and you're going to have to find a different technique. Psychology is always developing. There is so much that we do not know yet. There is so much that we're still learning. And therefore, any time you really buy hardcore into a psychological theory, you've got to realize it is just a theory. You know, look at Freud and stuff. All, all these things about everyone wants to bonk their mum and their dad and this is really what everyone's problems are about and how crazy we think most of those theories are now. It's I think it's probably going to be like that with, with a lot of these things in another 20, 30 years. But anyway, my point being, everyone varies with this stuff. Shadow work is not going to be good for everyone. So the people I would say, don't do this... Um, when it comes to basic, real shadow work, literally it's, gonna, it's just going to be uncomfortable and a bit annoying. It sh probably isn't going to make you cry, shake and puke. But then there's the TikTok version. I just want to take the example of one of the first videos that pops up when you put in shadow work on TikTok. I don't know how many views this video has, but it's one of the first videos you will see. And the tips that the person gives on journaling their shadow work is to go back to a traumatic incident in your life. You know, and I think if you've ever been, say, essayed or anything like that, probably the worst incident is going to be the thing that pops up in your head first, isn't it? You know, when someone says this, there's probably an incident that immediately comes to mind, right? So... They want you to go back to this incident and really put yourself in the moment. Put yourself back there. Please, God, don't do this while I'm talking. Just, 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 just let me talk it through. Don't do it. Um, so they want you to put yourself in the moment and ask yourself, how am I feeling? What, what, what am I feeling in this moment? And then you're supposed to ask what boundaries were being crossed? Which of my boundaries were being violated when this happened? And then you're supposed to ask yourself, Am I genuinely okay? <laughs> even fuck me, even just reading, like saying these things to you makes me feel kind of squicked out and emotional. Because basically what these people are pitching is an intense trauma therapy session. There is a reason that we have therapists for trauma work. That, you know, you, you have someone there to guide you through it and someone there to hopefully debrief you at the end of the session. If you're going to put yourself back in these places... And you're going to unearth all this stuff if you can afford a therapist. Please have a therapist present. If you cannot, at least have a good friend so that they can come in and talk you down afterwards if you're going to attempt this stuff solo. But I would read some books first. I would not just go headlong into this kind of stuff from, you know, a three prompt thing that you've got from a TikToker who doesn't give you any tips on debriefing afterwards, on aftercare from trauma work on any of these things. I think you need to read some books on trauma work before you go delving into these things if you have any major trauma or any fresh trauma. But the main category of people I feel should not, 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 not attempt shadow work solo are people who have ever had bouts of psychosis or who have a family history of psychosis because of the fact that a lot of this that or the way it's pushed on TikTok, a lot of it is really kind of going deep, deep, deep into your head. And you're almost supposed to start listening to your own thoughts as though they're the thoughts of someone else. When it comes to this inner child work, most inner child work that you find in books doesn't seem to involve 
asking your inner child questions and listening to what they have to say. Whereas on TikTok, there seems to be this strange belief that you can just sort of picture your inner child and just sort of ask them what they want or, you know, talk to your inner teenager, have a conversation. So suddenly you're um, you're dividing your psyche and you're you're having conversations in your head with, you know, something that you're trying to make into another entity. Uh, speaking as someone who has dealt with bouts of psychosis, this is the kind of thing that is going to send your brain a bit wonky if you have that kind of thing going on. So I would watch it. If, if you've got a history of psychosis, just, just delving deeply into your head. All the, all the theorising on TikTok about this shadow demon self. And um, I think all of these dark theologies going on would be very easy for a very slightly psychotic brain to latch onto and to turn into something very big and very scary. And, oh my God, I'm fighting the demons. And, oh, there's, there's, there's this child I have to look after. Oh my God, my inner child. And you might start talking to them, might start seeing them, might start feeling that they're an actual presence in the house with you that you have to care for. And I, I, sorry if I sound like I am exaggerating psychosis and stereotyping psychosis, but literally these are the kinds of things that I have personally experienced with psychosis was... Um, my inner child becoming this entity to me um, or like the younger version of myself becoming this entity that I had to protect and ooh, ooh, it makes me go all weird just thinking about it so you know this, this is one of the reasons that I have this book and I have not yet started working with this book is because I know I got this book largely for research purposes so I could make this video and warn people but I know that if I ever go near this book it's going to be a risky process for me therefore you definitely have to be quite distant from psychotic episodes, which, you know, it's been like two years or something since I had anything like that. And I very much know the warning signs at this point. So, you know, but even so, it's it's a f experience, I guess. I don't recommend it to anybody. Um, maybe it's something to make a video about at some point. Uh, but I don't recommend it to anybody. And... Getting yourself out of it is so much harder than getting yourself in. Falling into a psychotic episode feels very natural and very easy and actually almost quite good. I am, it's, I don't have bipolar. I don't know what manic episodes feel like. But from what I hear, they feel quite good. And you end up with these beliefs that you're all powerful and that you can do these things. And oh my, this is wonderful. The world is great. Oh my God, I'm like, I'm all powerful. Psychosis can be very similar. It can be this slide into euphoria and then it gets dark and then it fucks you over. And then trying to pull yourself out of it is like the hardest thing. And then the other thing that I'd like to mention about this TikTok version of shadow work is how tough and grueling people make it seem and how normalised they are trying to make being really, really, really traumatised by the work you are doing at home on your own psyche. They talk about how shadow work has a lot of looks, but it's basically going to be you crying your eyes out somewhere to the point possibly that you are going to be in your bed at three o'clock in the morning, crying, shaking, puking. This could be what shadow work looks like. They really make it sound as though shadow work is this grueling hardcore metal that you've got to win you've got to go through this and then you're you know it's going to be hell you've got to put yourself through hell and then you're going to emerge this hardcore you know there's this gorgeous dark feminine powerhouse this is this is what is pushed to you on tiktok um and i find that very dangerous again from the trauma standpoint if you have been told by these tiktokers who you trust that it's quite normal that you are suddenly going to be traumatised to the extent that you are throwing up and shaking. Oh, this is normal. It happened to me. It's completely normal. This is what happens to everyone when they do shadow work. It's a completely necessary part of your spiritual, mental evolution. The thing that these TikTokers just don't mention, and this is so, so, so dangerous, is that they don't mention the fact there is a line. There is a line that you should not cross with pushing your brain too far into traumatised mode. You really have to realise that minds can snap and they will. Speaking as someone who, as I say, has had psychotic incidents, who has had a huge nervous breakdown in 2009, and like I still have effects from that to this day. There are still things about me that are not the same as they were before 2009 because of pushing myself too far. And I don't think that 
basically voluntarily pushing yourself into a nervous breakdown because TikTokers have promised you that you are going to emerge from this thing tougher and stronger and more beautiful. I think we all know the line about it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. That line, we all know it's pretty much bullshit when it comes to mental health and trauma. That The stuff that doesn't kill you but comes close to it tends to f*** you up forever instead. And I don't want people doing this to themselves in bedrooms all around the world on the word of TikTokers who really, really should be telling people, look, I can I can tell you these bits and I will be telling you these bits and follow if you like me and you want to talk to me and I will tell you what I know. But for God's sake, go and read a book. If you're really interested and you want to know about this stuff, read a book. Don't just go on my three journal prompts and no aftercare tips and no, dude, there's a line. And if you get too traumatised with this, don't just keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. It is not a marathon man slog. You're not going to get a medal at the end of this. There is not a medal for trauma. So um, smashing your brain to smithereens is, is not necessarily a great idea, depending who you are. I feel shadow work should really be seen more as um, what it is, which is, you know, a psychological kind of philosophical theory and a way to think and a way to accept yourself and maybe deal with some some of your issues on your own. And that that is that, you know, that is what it is, essentially. But taking yourself back to the moment of the trauma and putting yourself back in that place, that's almost regression work, which if you've got real trauma, you don't want to do regression work on your own. Even if you don't have any problems with psychosis, you may find you have problems with relapse when it comes to traumatising yourself to this extent. And these TikTokers haven't told you what to do when you get to that point or how to get out of it. How, how are you going to get out of it? How are you going to make that emotion go away? Probably by relapsing, right? Um, because there's no advice on aftercare. There is no advice on distracting yourself, on having everything set up ready beforehand. You know, I would say if you're, if you're, oh God, I wouldn't attempt this stuff, but if you're going to, I would have some kind of self-care corner set up before you start. For The first thing I would do is set a timer, right? You're only going to do this for X amount of time, you know, half an hour, an hour, hour and a half, something like that. Something manageable. Set a timer on your phone and you're not going to ignore this timer. When it goes off, you're not going to say, oh, I'm I'm into this now, I've got to keep going. No, you're going to listen to the timer and you're going to go to the self-care corner and you're going to do the stuff that's there. So, you know, you might want to put some comforting comforting videos, comforting books. I would, you know, I'm really into Pokemon right now <laughs> and I'm on the Game Boy. And um, that I find a really, a really positive, uplifting distraction from anything that is going on. So you have those things, have some stim toys, have a friend's number to call, have a friend who is ready to be called, have some crisis line numbers lying around if they're needed. All of these things, anything you find comforting or uplifting, have it ready for some kind of aftercare and set a time limit on this because you don't want to be mixing sleep deprivation with this kind of it as well, particularly if you have psychosis issues or a history of psychosis in your family, sleep deprivation, you know, combined with all this tra trauma, combined with trying to personify and anthropomorphize your inner child and talking to them in your head like they're another person talking to you, combine all this shit with sleep deprivation, you're going to end up in an ugly, ugly place. It's probably going to be a psych ward. I just, mm, like say, we have found from studies that things as seemingly mild and harmless as mindfulness and meditation can be psychosis inducing for some people. And TikTok is trying to peddle shadow work that's something that everyone must do. And I just wanted to jump in and interrupt myself here to say that honestly, I agree on a level that everyone should do shadow work, but I'm talking about shadow work. I'm not talking about TikTok's botched DIY trauma therapy version. I'm talking about the actual shadow work of confronting and looking at your own negative traits and becoming more self-aware of the effect that other people have on you, the effect that you have on other people, not be in denial about your own negative qualities. I think these are vital things for everyone to do. Certain things like being aware that when there are people who really, really irritate you and you can't work out why they irritate you, but they really do, it's usually because they remind you of a facet of yourself or your own personality that you don't like and you won't admit 
limit you have. Being aware of that and realizing you're projecting your anger and your hatred that is self-hatred onto someone else and that's why you're being so nasty to them. Things like this are really, really vital for the human race and for us to get along with each other and to make the world a better place. So shadow work, it is an essential thing for everyone to do, but that is actual shadow work. That is not, like, say, this botched DIY trauma therapy, regression therapy that is very, very, very dangerous and that TikTokers are pushing in, you know, 30 second videos that give no information, no aftercare, no warnings, no suggestion of reading a book or getting more information than you've got in this 30 second video. Oh, yeah, just just go wild on your own deep traumatic issues all by yourself at three o'clock in the morning on the basis of a 30 second video and no more information than that. Please, God, don't do that. It's a bad, bad, bad idea that if you can't do it, you're, you know, you're a coward. You're, you're a coward. You're not embracing your full potential. Blah, blah, blah. Mm, we all do this, don't we? The minute we find something that works for us, particularly when we're young and we haven't realised yet that everyone is different, when we find something that works for us on our mental health, we immediately try and ram it down everyone else's throats. For me, it was psychedelic drugs. That I, you know, I really thought if you have a problem, you've got to go and do shrooms about it because this is what worked for me and it's going to work for everyone. I didn't realise that some people have either psychosis issues or they have such deep trauma that if you make them do some kind of psychedelic and you make it really introspective and all of this, they're, they're going to lose it and probably try and top themselves or something like you, you No, there is no one size fits all cure. You can't ram these things down people's throats because, you know, you can you can offer it, but you have to offer it in a balanced way. And this is the problem with TikTok, apart from so many other problems. The problem with TikTok is that videos are not long enough for people to put in a full disclaimer of, OK, you should not attempt this if blah, 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 because no one wants to talk about there being a line that you shouldn't cross on TikTok because shadow work and dark femininity and all of this, it does. People are just trying to make it, you know, juice it for everything it's worth and try and make it seem as dark and as spooky and as evil as possible. So no one wants to talk about the fact that there is a line you shouldn't cross, keep yourself safe, blah, blah, blah. No one wants to give this middle-aged advice on TikTok. I would say that shadow work of this TikTok variety is probably particularly dangerous if you have any kind of disorder that enhances emotions. So particularly BPD. I would say, just because the level of emotions that BPD people are capable of feeling, if they throw themselves into thinking about their trauma really hard or thinking that they, even thinking that they are a completely unlovable person because of focusing on shadow characteristics, that could really fuck up a BPD person. But even autism and just the level of uh, emotions we can feel... Um, could be bad. And if you're an autism ADHD crossover, so you've got the impulsivity as well. So, you know, you really, I'm trash. And you've got the impulsive decision to go and do something awful about that. Well, quite messy. I, oh, I just think there needs to be such a big warning label on these TikTok shadow work videos. But this is long now. So I'm going to round it off by saying I will list the book I am talking about below. But seriously, go to Google, search up best books on shadow work have a browse see what you want to do because you know there are the more dense textbooks on what it's really about the actual theory all of that stuff if you've got the concentration to read that kind of book you might find it fascinating i personally don't so i, I just I, I knew i wouldn't get through it so i didn't buy those books but there's a lot of interesting books out there on shadow work and all its different elements and all the different takes on it and all of that um, similarly, dark femininity, you know, stick into Google best books on dark femininity if you're interested. In, and there's going to be so many on so many different elements of it from, you know, tapping into it and in various journaling prompts to, you know, books on interesting things like uh, BDSM and dominatrixes and how to do all of that stuff. And, you know, tapping into the, you know, the, the really dominant aspect of dark femininity if you're interested in that. And I really am. I'd love to read a book about that at some point, actually. Um, so yeah, go to Google, get a book. Um, and when you're listening to these TikTokers, always, always, always just, just pull back a little bit and just, just realize that you, no matter how gorgeous this person looks, no matter how experienced they sound, no matter how worldly they come off, unless they are actually, actually a trained psychologist, psychiatrist, something of that nature, they are just a random person on the internet giving their opinion. If something that you're doing based on their advice feels any kind of wrong to you, 
even if they've told you, oh, it's going to feel wrong, it's going to feel awful, you just have to go through it. If it feels wrong to you, pull back and do something else. And like you say, have the aftercare ready if you are going to attempt any of this shit at all. Um, I would say even if you're going to attempt the the lighter elements of of shadow work, of just thinking, oh, what are my unpleasant traits? What what are my unpleasant traits like? Um, you might want to have something to look forward to after that. <laughs> you know, you might want to think that I'm I'm going to watch something I, I really want to watch after this, just to cheer myself up again after thinking about how awful I can be. <laughs> you know, um, so yeah, that that is what I would like to say about shadow work. And yeah, the the second video on dark femininity will be coming up. Uh, this is long. I'm losing my voice. I'm going to shut up. But uh, if you have anything to add, please drop it below. So uh, thank you for listening. Uh, I'm out. Bye-bye. <laughs>